Hey, it's Chris, DC Superheroes United. Quick, ranked, re-ranked update. Where are things at at the final, final hours of this campaign? Because all of a sudden at the end, like Simon always does, they said, boom, 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 boom. Here's a couple new things. And how are you gonna deal with that? And where are you gonna rank things now if you're not backing it like I'm not? So if you're interested, again, quick update. Where are things at? My thoughts on them, re-addressing, re-ranking, retelling of the expansion content to help you figure out no FOMO let's go go so where are things at what is new what is going on well first off we have to talk about the conqueror's pledge all in right I did a little short the other day and it was $385 $385 $385 dollars before shipping and that is not insignificant they're giving you all the gameplay content at least they're not throwing in or making you buy deluxe locations along with it but they're giving you $30 discount and a $30 discount plus or minus because you're getting this massive starro and and a batmobile right and to be fair it's less grotesque both of them from the other large massive miniatures we've seen in the other campaigns <clears throat> i'm looking at you cthulhu or uh, galactus but what concerns me is that that is the only way this conqueror pack that you can get it so i really dislike that as a whole it's going different than say some of the other ones where they said throw in a old man logan or a storm as the exclusive right at those pledge levels that we saw being you know fomo-esque fear out all the time previously but this is like bigger now i'll make the argument that the batmobile looks completely bleh to me right you put it on there you put a couple cards as a support character in the main deck and then you just kind of deal with it and kind of draw it out and it gives a safe place if you're batman or robin and depending if you have batman in there one or two cards whatever it may be right star was a little bit different star was a whole new villain and to be honest he's like too big for the actual board itself and so it's gonna it's like cthulhu it's completely superfluously ubiquitously uh throwing in adjectives here not very helpful but it does have this weird mechanic of where you're attaching these spores to the hero's faces just like in the comic books and just like in the shows if you've seen it from that side of things and when it bams it mind controls to attack heroes nearby but also using uh the thugs and crisis tokens in those locations even and mind controlled civilians all in one so it's going to be doing whoa so i think it's really 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 cool i just freaking hate that it is locked the way it is that being said do you all in for 385 dollars as i said in the other video one if you have one two or three seasons you don't need three quarters of this stuff Two, the best pledge that you will ever have out of this one to be redundant is not the Super Friends pledge. It's probably the Titans pledge. Because if we've seen anything, I think Titans is high risk, high reward with what they're offering there. Because the Titans pledge gives you that little Teen Titan exclusive expansion, as well as the Power Girl and the Wonder Twins and Gleek and that sort of thing, right? But that expansion that typically has gone with the base pledge has been by far and away the best expansion, well-rounded, most developed, of any of the expansions on the previous two slash three campaigns we've seen from a United Seamon standpoint. So if there's anything track record to go off of, that is the biggest one to consider needing to get. And $35 comparatively puts it right in the middle of all those other ones. Now, that being said, how do I feel about the other expansions? Because we also just saw at the tail end here, the War of Freaking Light, which is kind of why, I, when I alluded to the other video, why we didn't see some of those other bigger named lanterns. All of a sudden, they just said, we're gonna make a whole new pack, which again, argues that do green lanterns or lanterns in general need two expansions? No, that's a big downside, but I guess they're also covering a lot of other ground in the sense of the stretch goal box. So that's also why you don't really need any expansions in the first place. But I'm sort of mixed feelings because this expansion with war of the light is kind of intriguing and you get all of the colors of the lanterns in the first place including the white lantern as kyle so i mean it's cool you're getting two you know sort of flip-flop hero villain guys you're getting four extra villains which are giving you tons and tons of content so i'd say just from that standpoint of 40 dollars and being completely kickstarter exclusive that probably puts it at, oh, I hate to say this, but you know, truth be told, I'd say it probably puts it at number one right now beyond Teen Titans. So I'd say Teen Titans number one, I'd say War of the Light number two. Then after that, you're really looking at ex exclusivity again. I think the Suicide Squad gives me definitive vibes of the Sinister Sticks. I still say that is number three. Then for the good stuff that's going along with it, I think you still have to go Arkham Asylum number four, Playmat number five, because I rank Playmat over some of these expansions at this point, 
because again with the justice society of america with the gotham cities with the metropolis the green lanterns and even the sidekicks i think a lot of those things are having more significant overlap i think they're less beneficial and again as i said in the other video location 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 doesn't matter whatsoever so there's too much redundancy in the locations and so i'd say your biggest bang for your buck are your villains as well as your flippers right the purple i can be either side of the spectrum in that sense if i want to be and so that's going to give you the most so then i would probably say after uh suicide squad you have arkham asylum just because i think you're getting a lot of the classic batman villains there a lot more villains in general that you're going to be familiar with and then i think that's going to be the, probably the best thing along with the breakout and so that's why that's going to be four then you're going to be having like i said the play mat then i would make the argument still that I would say six is probably going to agree Green Lantern Corps, but I would make the question, and this is why I was really looking at War of Light really, really closely before doing this video, that is War of Light going to be as compatible or is it going to be more like Spider-Geddon where some of those ones are just going to fall completely flat if you don't do it outside of it? And the answer to that is both yes and no. War of Light, and that's the reason why it doesn't necessarily took over the one spot, is that I think some of those are going to be very situation specific, but they've also addressed that in the same expansion saying we're going to give you extra ring equipment that if you use a non-lantern hero, you actually be able to equip it. But otherwise, with the self-contained situation with War of Light, I think it's going to be a little bit more divisive where it's not going to be as compatible with some of the mechanics if you're not utilizing, say, more than one or two lanterns as a whole or if you're not going up against a lantern specific enemy so that's why i'd say green lantern in that space i could probably go either way with these next three justice society of america gotham city and metropolis i guess i'd probably give the edge to justice society of america if i'm really going to be edging things out right now and then i'm only then because it would be in front of the other two because it's completely Kickstarter exclusive rather than Gotham and Metropolis both being exclusive with having two figures, neither of which are terribly enticing, both being heroes and, you know, supports, not villains or the, you know, anti-heroes that I just mentioned that are more important to me, giving me more customization, more variability and just more content in general. I prefer Gotham and Batman over Superman. So I'd rank Gotham, then Metropolis, and then, you know, way, 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 way far in the distance distance if that was like nine previously if i'm counting correctly there uh you know i would say probably the campaign decks are number 10 because they just threw that out at the end as well but the problem with that is again and this is why it's not necessarily a little bit higher campaign sounds awesome 15 dollars price wise giving you stories giving you content from comics giving you things that you're going to recognize and have nostalgia for i think is awesome battling through a series of four to five games i think they're doing really really cool things but you need a lot of that content that i just mentioned in the first place and so that is going to be the biggest downside team decks you know again price value wise again you know 15 dollars for 10 decks it's not as good as the first time around so that's going to be what would that be number uh you know 11 in that sense if i'm counting right again and then sidekicks again i would make the argument that sidekicks are last i don't see the need for sidekicks i think they're you know arcadia quest pets style situation and so i would put them at the very tail end of things and they would be one of the first things i would actually consider selling if i'm going to get the all in which i'm totally not going to get the all in <sighs> So that's where we're going to see things go. Uh, but I would make the argument that they're utterly, utterly the least important from that aspect of things. And the rest of the luxifications, as I said previously, uh, the plastic tokens, completely not necessary. Cardboard locations, again, I see location conversation earlier. The villain dashboards upgraded, don't need it whatsoever. And painting compendium, you're never going to paint these in the first place. So food for thought in that way. So updated rank list, updated thoughts with the two new things that they snuck out there i guess if you want to go back here a second and talk about that conqueror pack that you're getting only if you could add on that separately uh again i would probably pay the same similar price for an expansion content if you're looking at it purely from that side of things i would probably put the conquerors pack probably i would probably put it below war of light i would probably even put it below suicide squad but i'd put it above because i think starro could be something cool but it's going to be a little bit hit or miss because you're getting one good thing and one kind of meh thing for potentially that sort of price as a whole. I could easily slot it somewhere in the middle there after the playmat, but I could also even have it lower than, say, even the Green Lantern course, depending on if Starro is actually, actually freaking good and I want to play him a bunch, or it's like the Sentinels with the X-Men version of things where Sentinels are really cool, but I didn't see a lot of wanting to replay them over and over and over and over again, right? It's cool once or twice, and it wasn't as cool to me after that. So that would be my fear. So, I, you know, again, if it was by itself and you could do that, that's probably why it wouldn't be ranked as high. But if you're a FOMO completionist, boy, howdy, did they find a way to sucker you in at the end? Not you, not you, me.
as always, talking about me, not you. So that's where things are at. DC Superheroes United. Are you enticed? Are you interested? Are you more intrigued, less intrigued? Are, you know, again, I'm always getting to people in the comments section saying, well, Chris, they did an all in that had something exclusive. I'm just going to completely drop the whole thing. Don't need to be that dramatic. You don't need to do that. You can still get pick and choose, get just what you want. Get what is going to be played only if this game is going to be one of your most played games, period. Like for me, it is. So again, do what I say, not what I do. Say classy. Have a great freaking day. Peace out. Let me know what you think.